everyone, my name is Clay. Welcome to Hockey Talkie. We have made it. This is the video where I will be revealing the greatest Blackhawk to ever play. Ever. Like, like this is scientifically proven. Democracy has spoken. If you're out of the loop, basically what happened was during the NCAA college basketball tournament, March Madness, I decided to create my own bracket and call it Hawks Madness, and I got 32 Blackhawks players from throughout history, put them in a bracket, and then just let loose voting on them to decide the matchups and get us all the way to where we are today, which is the champion. So basically what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to announce who the winner is, the greatest Blackhawk ever to play, uh, because I don't really want to waste your guys' time. And then the rest of the video is just going to be me kind of explaining the process and some things I found interesting from the whole thing. So here we go. Championship match between Patrick Kane and Stan Mikita. And boy, that is a tough, a tough choice for anyone voting in this. And the winner got 58% of the votes. So 58 to 42%. And that person who got the 58%, that player, was none other than Stan Makita. That's right, Stash the God, the one with the jersey patch honoring him this year after his unfortunate death last year. Uh, rest in peace, Stan Makita, deserving of this title as the greatest Blackhawk to ever play. It's been proven. It's been proven. You cannot go against this result. He is, without a doubt, because of you guys, the voters, the greatest Blackhawk to ever play. So there you go, there's your champion. Now let's look at how we got here. So here's the original bracket, 32 players from throughout Blackhawks history. And when you look at the names on here, you'll probably notice some names that are missing, uh, who you would think would be in you know, the conversation for the top 32 players to play for the Blackhawks. But here's the thing or here's why you see the names that are on this bracket you know guys like maybe a jeff hackett or a jocelyn tebow or something like that uh basically what i wanted to do was i wanted to get players from across multiple eras of blackhawks history and i also wanted to have a even representation of positions so goalies forwards defensemen uh, so that's why you may see a guy like Steve Larmer not on here. Not because he's not a really good player in the history of the Blackhawks, but because I just wanted to include some other players. And unfortunately, with only 32 spots, some guys just had to drop off. And it's nothing against them. Uh, it just, that's the way it is. And, and I could have <laughs> included 64 players for this, but... I thought of this idea like the week of the March Madness tournament, you know, like, oh, wouldn't this be a cool idea? Let's let's do this. And so I didn't really have a whole lot of time. Like, I didn't have time to really plan this out all that well. So I just stuck with 32. Uh, and I wanted to run this through just the duration of the March Madness tournament. So, like, we would still be voting right now if I did 64 teams. I didn't really want that to be the case. Or, sorry, 64 players. And not only that, but like I didn't spend a whole lot of time ranking either. I just kind of threw players in buckets. I wasn't really worried about, oh, this, should this guy be a three or a four seed? I, I didn't really care. I just wanted to throw him in the bracket, loosely ranked, and just let it go. You know, put it into production. Let the people see it and vote. And, well, that's what happened. So as you probably noticed in that first round, there was a pretty interesting matchup. There was two interesting matchups. Uh, number one was Dennis Savard and Marion Hossa battling against each other first round. That's a tough matchup, and it drew a lot of attention, and rightfully so. I actually ended up ranking Marion Hossa kind of lower than maybe a lot of people would. Um, but the reason I did that was... Because Marion Hossa played less than half his career for the Blackhawks. So I, I kind of docked him a little bit for that. And that's why he was kind of lower in the ranks. And that, that's why he ended up you know, matching up with a guy like Dennis Savard. And, you know, 
you want to say that shouldn't be a matchup for a first round, but at the same time, it doesn't matter, you know, how far a player gets in this. All we're trying to accomplish is who the greatest Blackhawk player is. And that can only be one player. So you got to beat everyone <laughs> to win that title. And so Marion Hosa or Dennis Savard, like, if you don't win in the first round, doesn't matter. If you don't win in the second round, doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter where you lose uh, or how far you make it unless you make it all the way to the end. And then the second uh, interesting matchup in that first round was Chris Chelios versus Patrick Sharp. Um, Patrick Sharp got nearly 40% of the vote there. That's kind of uh, crazy considering uh, if you look at him in a bubble, uh, that shouldn't be the case. Chris Chelio should r just wipe the floor with Patrick Sharp, right? That, that's kind of what you expect, right? But here's the thing. With this whole bracket and the voting and everything, I didn't necessarily want this to just be, you know, stat-based or, or Hall of Fame-based or, or what have you. I wanted it to be empowering for voters in that they could vote for a player for whatever reason, they saw fit. So whether it be stats that you'd vote for a player, or maybe it's a personal connection or a memory, whatever it may be, however you remember that player as a great Blackhawk, uh, that's how I wanted people to vote. So Chris Chelios, Hall of Famer, great player, but he also left to go to the Red Wings. Kind of some ugly history there. Meanwhile, you got Patrick Sharp, not a Hall of Famer, good, but not Hall of Fame good. However, he did win three Stanley Cups for this franchise. And so you can kind of see why someone would vote for Chelios and why someone would vote for Patrick Sharp. You can see now why Sharp got nearly 40% of the vote. So that was it for the first round. Moving on to the next round, the Sweet 16, you have two more interesting matchups. You had uh, Bobby Hull versus Ed Belfour. That one was interesting because Ed Belfour got nearly 43% of the votes, which if you look at this matchup in a bubble, it shouldn't be the case. Bobby Hull, one of the greatest scorers in NHL history, number retired by the Blackhawks, won a Stanley Cup with the Blackhawks. Ed Belfour, good goalie, helped the Blackhawks get to a Stanley Cup in the early 90s. Um, that's pretty much it. Well, also the Eagle mask. That's that's a big part of him, but that's pretty much it, right? Like this should have been a landslide if you think of it in a bubble. But obviously, Ed Belfour resonated with some people, and really, like I said, that's all that matters. There's some distaste for Bobby Hull uh, amongst the masses, so that probably played into it. And Ed Belfour. He's an interesting character. He's got the iconic eagle mask. I, it's probably why he almost won this one. But in the end, he didn't. Bobby Hall did, and he advanced. The second interesting matchup was Duncan Keith versus Marion Hossa. I mean, those are two heavyweights going at it. Hossa back-to-back heavyweight matches to uh, start this bracket, but he would finally fall in the second round. Duncan Keith moving on probably uh, because of, you know, Con Smythe winning and, and being an alternate captain. And uh, that was a tough one. Uh, but once again, doesn't matter. All that we care about is finding who the greatest Blackhawk ever was. And that can only be one person. The Elite Eight uh, didn't really have any close matches. Um, although it was interesting to see Jonathan Taze uh, beat Bobby Hull. Uh, you probably think that Bobby Hull was probably the better player. Uh, but Jonathan Taze recency bias and also he did captain the Hawks to three Stanley Cups and Bobby Hull did not do that as much as Bobby Hull scored didn't win three cups with the Hawks and well you know what's the point of playing in the NHL to win Stanley Cups so that certainly means something and probably the reason why Taze won that matchup and advanced to the final four so to the final four, we went Stan Mikita beating Jonathan Taze. That was a close one. Um, Jonathan Taze getting a lot of votes. Once again, I think probably because of recency bias and also 
Stanley Cups that he won. But Stan Makita, obviously, getting through that matchup, as we know he was the ultimate winner. And then Patrick Kane, uh, just kind of a landslide victory over Duncan Keith. And that's how you got to our championship match. And, well, we know who won. So that is how Hawks Madness played out this year. We had 381 votes throughout the course of this bracket. Uh, 69 votes in the championship match. Pretty nice, right? Um, thank you for being a part of it, voting. Uh, it was fun to do. It really was. And finding out Stan Makita was the champ uh, was cool as well. I would like to do this again next year. Probably won't do Greatest Blackhawk ever because, well, we've already figured it out. We can't go against this. It would just be redundant, right? So probably do something maybe like Best Goal Ever or something like that. Who knows? We got a year. We'll figure something out. But anyhow, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. But most importantly, stay safe. Make good decisions. Hopefully you guys are enjoying playoff hockey. And I'll see you next time.